Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Attorney Justice for All. I am your host Kaylee Watari, and today we are going to continue with the first case of the um, of the game, the Lost Turnabout, and continue on with the trial. September eighth, eleven forty-three a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number One. Amnesia? I can't believe my lawyer's trying to defend me in such a state. I, I uh, why didn't you tell me, sir? I'm sorry, I didn't mention it to you. Oh, I know what to do. I heard you can fix something like this was a really strong shock to your system. Come on, lower your head a little. Sorry, that would be my phone losing power again. Nick should be all you need. Uh, no, 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 I think I'll pass on this one. Come on, I'm sorry. Whenever I see someone in trouble, I have a hard time leaving them alone. I tend to stick my nose where it doesn't belong and try to tackle everyone's problems. Well, my head's one problem he won't be tackling today. Well, we're here to solve your problem first. We can deal with mine later. For now, do you think you can fill me out on a few things? Of course, I'd be honored, sir. Oh, uh, well... I guess we'll start with my name, and then I can tell you about me. No, no, that, that's okay, really. I think I know you and your name pretty well by now. I was wondering if you could help me figure out a few things about myself. So, my name is Phoenix, right? What a weird name. Hmm, this is really serious. You really don't remember anything. I'll tell you what, sir. You can have this back and maybe it'll help. This is a business card. I got this from you. It's my most prized possession. You can borrow it for now, but please give it back, okay? Okay... There seems to be some numbers written on the back. Oh, that's your cell phone number. Phoenix Wright's business card added to the record. I guess for now we should stop talking about me and start talking about this case. This case? Yep, can you think of anyone that would anything that would be helpful for me to know? Um, what can I tell you? My, um, uh... Hmm. I can't think of anything other than... The incident with that phone, but... I'll be right back. Just, uh, need to... Speaking of phones, need to fix mine and charge it and stuff. I'll be right back. Cell phone? Yeah, your eyes lit up when we talked about it at the detention center, sir. Hurry up then and tell me. This may be very important. Okay, roger that. It was on the day of the crime, just before 6 p.m. I picked up a lost cell phone while on a walk with Dustin.
It's that evil ringtone. All of a sudden, the phone began to ring. Oh, uh, hello? Oh, thank you! I've been... searching for my... poor phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can... meet up and I can give this back. I'll be right there. Um, I'm sorry I didn't catch your name. You can call me Maggie. We agreed to meet up at 6 p.m. Justin and I waited for the person to show up. But they never did. Interesting. So where is the phone you found now? <coughs> oh, excuse me. I gave it to you yesterday. Huh? T to me? I don't remember that. Oh wait, you mean this? Do you think it has anything to do with the murder? I don't really know. But, if my eyes lit up... Ah, oh, you were here all along? Oh, that was Maya. I did not know that was Maya. Ah, oh, you were here all along? You're so mean! I called you like a million times, but you wouldn't pick up. And when I went to check in the courtroom, everyone was already had already left. Uh, 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 who, who the heck is this? Let me guess, I'm supposed to know this girl too. Hey, good morning, Maggie. And a good morning to you too, Maya. So, so, how's it going? Is there a word for worse than abysmal? Oh! And what if I said that everything will be fine? That's right, it's my to the rescue with the ultra decisive, super important evidence! Here you are, Nick. The thing you wanted me to bring. Huh? Oh, uh, thanks. What the heck is this supposed to be? A, a list? It has about 20 people's names and phone numbers written on it. kind of tough, but I managed to find out some dirt. It looks like these guys are up to no good, Nick. No good, as in... There's a group of con artists. The police are currently investigating. guys are members of that group. Names list, eyes to the record. Why would a group of con artists pop up in a case like this? Don't look at me! Hmm. And where did you get this list from in the first place? What? Why are you asking that? You're the one who asked me to look this up yesterday. Oh, uh, right. Is that right? Those numbers were in the memory of that phone Maggie found. Hmm. So that's where they're from. You're awfully forgetful these days, Nick. 
hope I never get to be a forgetful old prune like you. Um, Maya, actually, Mr. Wright is... Mr. Wright, recess is now over. Please bring the defendant and return to the courtroom immediately. Oh, oops. Guess you have to get going. We can talk about you being old later, Nick. W wish us luck. I guess I have all the... All the pieces now. More or less. At least all that I'm gonna get. All that's left to do is... Put it all together. I'm not going to lose this. I can't. Come on, Nick! Better get a move on! Y yeah right Coming. September 8th, 11.54 a.m. District Court, courtroom number 2. The court will now reconvene. Please call your next witness to the stand, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor! But before I do, if I may say a few words. What is it, Mr. Payne? to give a preface. Just hurry up and call your witness, please. E yes, Your Honor. The prosecution calls the next witness. A drifter who was taking a walk in the park on the day of the murder. Where have we seen him before? Just state your name for the court, witness. Before I do, I'd like to clarify a little something. Huh? Oh, alright, go ahead! Just now, you introduced my wonderful self to the court, correct? Perhaps as a drifter who was taking a walk? stand for that. Now you've tinted the court's eyes and colored me wrongly. Sure, I suppose calling me but to give in and everything in my life and now I'm really looking perfect of... Sorry, too fast for me to read it properly for you guys, but you get the drift. Yes, yes, I understand. I'm very sorry. I'll be more careful from now on. What is he? A human chatterbox? Uh, I have to question him? Fashion, care, women! Glasses, and of course, university! First rates, only need apply. Glasses? But you aren't wearing glasses. Enough, your name, witness. Oh, is that how you want to f play this? Using your power and influence to keep the young people down? I see how you work now. You old people and your dirty tricks. You thought you had me, but you fought wrong. I'm sorry, it won't happen again. Oh, man. I forgive you. Alright, I suppose I can tell you my name. I'm Richard Wellington. The...
drifting virtuoso with a PhD in drifting, as it were. If you wanted to, you could call me a university student in transit. Ahem, Mr. Wellington. On the day of the murder, you were taking a... er... strolling through the park, correct? It would appear that you are attached to that word, if you must, then by all means. But I remind you that I am in no way a perpubescent boy out on a walk with mommy. Anyway, please testify to the court what you saw during your walk through the park. You see, you said it again. Taking a walk? You know, you... What you witness will do, Mr. Wellington. Now let's begin with his testimony. What I saw that day. I was at the park all afternoon, deep in thought about my life situation. I don't remember the time all that well, but I do believe it was past 6 p.m. All of a sudden, a police officer falls from above, right in front of my eyes! Without a thought, I looked up, and there I met the eyes of a charming young lady. Of course I remember her sweet face. It was that of the pretty defendant there. The only other thing I saw was... The banana that fell was the police officer. Hmm, that was certainly a decisive testimony. Decisive? Nick! You hear what he just said? Yeah. That's all you have to say? Yeah? How can you be so calm? It's strange. My mind is very calm and clear. Maybe it's because I, um, well, I believe in my client. You mean Maggie? Yes, and if she really is innocent, then that can only mean one thing. That guy is lying. You may now question the witness, Mr. Wright. I'll find out the truth. No matter how well you craft your lies. I'm gonna do a quick save because I'm not as sure what to do here. And, um, yeah, well, I have an idea, but yeah, I'm just gonna save anyway. Alright, here we go. I'm gonna try the last statement. What about the banana? The banana? Well, it was actually more than just one, more like a bunch of bananas. What would a bunch of bananas be doing there? <clears throat> Why would I know such a thing? I'm only telling you what I saw. That's really strange, Nick. Maggie never mentioned anything about a bunch of bananas. That's it, Nick. He's got to be lying about the bananas. Hmm. He could be, but... There's no reason for him to lie about there being bananas at the crime scene. And what if it's not a lie? Well, maybe he thought he was seeing one thing and it was something else. If he mistook something... <clears throat> else for being a bunch of bananas, then that would be an inaccuracy. 
Sink, Phoenix, sink! If my client is innocent, there is no way he could have seen what he says he did. Which means if we can somehow show he's lying, yeah, that's exactly what we need to we need to do. She's right. She's got a sharp mind, but I just wish I could rem remember who she is. Is everything okay, Nick? No, he forgets you, Maya. Which I'm sure you'll be very pissed about. to the banana statement. Objection! Ah, there we go. It was the baseball glove, which is not banana- which are not bananas. <clears throat> Sorry about that, uh, little break there. Um, my controller kept pushing the wrong button, so you'll see I have a bit of strikes on me now. <laughs> um, Mr. Wellington, I believe I have the banana you saw Right here! Ah, so you know about the banana too! Why didn't you say so earlier? But don't think you can use this as a way to pull more information out of me! And that's where you'd be wrong! M Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? Isn't that the baseball glove? Huh? What? 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 A, a baseball glove? Doesn't it look delicious? Care for a bite? Th that's... Uh, that's not... It's a... No! Your Honor, I think this proves one very important fact. This witness... has bad eyesight. <laughs> By the way, just how bad are your eyes? Uh, 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 what? You... Why are you asking me... Uh, about this all of a sudden? Your Honor, it's very simple to mistake a glove for a bunch of bananas. I don't think so. Objection overruled. Y y you you're one of those people. Yes, you know what I mean. You're you're just up. An evil defense attorney. Don't like you. And that is why I ask you how bad your eyesight is. They're both 20-25. I suppose you're going to tell me that's terrible, right? Why are you not wearing your glasses today, then? Um... That's because I lost them recently, you see. Of course, I was planning on getting a new pair made right away. But you know, my glasses are no ordinary glasses, so to replace them... Now, about when you witnessed the crime, were you wearing your glasses then? How about a witness? Y y you are unrelenting, an unrelenting evil man! You're like those people, aren't you? The ones that always make fun of me! Which boils down to you are not wearing your glasses at that time. Therefore, the identity of the woman at the scene of the crime and that of the defendant cannot be proven to be the same by this witness. But the height difference was only nine feet! It was very possible for him to see the face of the culprit standing on the upper path. Hmm, witness? Please be more accurate in your testimony. 
Remember, a person's life is at stake. E yes, Your Honor. Now then, please continue with your testimony. Please tell the court what happened next. In the moments after you witnessed the crime. New testimony time. What happened next? The girl on the upper path ran away as soon as she realized I was there. After that, I immediately called the police station to report the crime. It must have been 6.45 p.m. when I made the call. They must have a lot of free time on their hands, since they showed up within 10 minutes. Hmm. So the person who was on the upper path saw you and then ran away? Yes, that is correct. Which is why, even someone without a superior brain like mine can understand that. That girl is a murderer! You may question the witness now, Mr. Wright. Oh, great, what am I supposed to do this time? Um, so yesterday was the time. How do you know what time it was? <clears throat> the detective told me you know which one I mean. The one with the jacket that makes him look like a dropout from a no-name high school? Not a nice insult on gumshoe. Hey, pal, I graduated from a pretty good, I mean, top-ranked college. <laughs> I don't believe this. It doesn't matter. I don't believe I was mistaken in on what time I called. If I am wrong, then that detective obviously doesn't know how to tell time. What? Why you? You're just some... lousy kid who... I think the court can see your point. Anyway, how did the police respond? So you're saying that there were police on the cr cr on the uh, on the scene by 7 p.m. <clears throat> they got there before that, I think. There usually aren't many people in that area at that time of day. But suddenly, before I knew it, there were people crawling all over, gawking. It certainly says something about. The morals of the people in this country. I can't find anything out of the ordinary in his testimony. Why don't you take one more look at the court record? Yeah, I guess I should. Do you believe it has to do with the time? I made the call. The autopsy report? Yes, it's the autopsy report. Objection. There we go, it is the time. <clears throat> Mr. Wellington, would you please take a look at this? You mean the victim's autopsy report? According to this, the murder occurred at 6.20 p.m. So what of it? You said that you called the police immediately after the murder took place. However, at the time you had called the police, it was already 6.45 p.m. There is clearly a...
15 minute gap here. Do you deny it? Ah! I think this court would like to hear what you were doing during those 15 minutes. Ugh. The witness was in shock at the time after witnessing a terrible murder. It only to be expected that he wouldn't would be a little dazed. Fifteen minutes is hardly what I would call a little dazed. Ah! <clears throat> Mr. Wellington. Y yes. Explain yourself. What were you doing during those fifteen minutes? Answer the question. I uh. Telephone! I, um, er, I mean... Spit it out! I, I was searching for a phone booth! A phone booth? You mean you didn't have a cell phone? You and your questions, as if you're trying to open up the layers of a... Matryoshka doll! I think you're really something special. Witness. I... I lost my cell phone. There, are you happy? You lost it? Unbelievable. You lose your glasses and your cell phone? You must be very scatterbrained when it comes to your belongings. What? Are you saying that... First-rate people are never allowed to lose things! Haven't you ever heard of... of misplacing things and losing your memory and... enough! Oh man, oh man... Wait, hold on a second. He lost his cell phone? Nick, that cell phone, could it be? You mean this phone Maggie found? There's no way. Boy, I didn't see this coming. What should I do now? Question further. Mr. Wellington. <coughs> Excuse me. Where's your cell phone right now? getting so excited about you seem to be a little confused I found my phone I'll have you know so see here it is oh I see hmm looks like he's got a cell phone And I thought that just maybe this was his. Hmm. Well then, I think we've cleared this one up. At the time of the murder, the witness did not have his cell phone because he had lost it. Therefore, the delay in his call was caused by his search for a phone booth. That's the gist of it. I guess you could put it that way and leave it at that. Do you have any further questions, Mr. Wright? Well, yes, of course I do. There is something. <clears throat> Your Honor, the witness's testimony does not make sense. I don't believe that there was ever a need for the witness to search for a for a phone. H how dare you! You can't just make an outrageous claims like that! You do have some sort of proof, don't you? Uh, well, yeah. Uh, proof? Uh, of course there's proof. The evidence should be good enough, I think. Alright, let's have this proof then. And since this is a picture-proof one, I'm just gonna do a quick save. 
Officer Thorpe proved that the witness had no need to search for a public phone. Phone booth. <clears throat> Actually, please take a look at this. The crime scene photo? <clears throat> Is there a problem with it? Oh, there's nothing wrong with the picture. But if you don't understand my logic after looking at it, something's wrong with you. Oh! It's... It's a phone booth. That is correct. All the defendant had to do was walk three steps. Mr. Wellington, why did you not use the phone that was right in front of you? Ugh! Order, order! What? What is reporting the crime a little late proved to for you? The witness can't explain what he was doing for those 15 minutes. That is reason enough to... For a suspicion on his testimony. Yes. This is very true. What do you have to say for yourself, witness? Then I bet the phone really is his, Nick. He must have killed Dustin to get his phone back. But Maggie said that she was going to return it to him. So there was no reason for him to kill for it. And on top of that, we still have the phone she found anyway. <clears throat> hmm. But if he wasn't looking for his cell phone, was he looking for something else? Was he? Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? Do you have any thoughts you would like to share with the court? Can you offer an explanation as to what the witness was doing during those 15 minutes? Yes, I have an idea. There is only one possible explanation. <clears throat> Alright, let's hear your explanation. However, be forewarned that if your explanation is not persuasive, you will be penalized. Think carefully before you can present, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, I probably shouldn't have said there was only one possibility. Please present to the court the one piece of evidence that will answer the following. Why didn't the witness call the police right away? glasses. Mr. Wellington. W what Don't do that. You, you almost made me have a heart attack. These are your glasses, aren't they? <clears throat> oh, where, where did you find them? Ugh. I believe the court all heard what you just confessed to. That these glasses are in fact yours. I'll tell you where they were found, Mr. Wellington. These glasses were found under the victim's body. <gasps> under the vi victim's body? Order, order! And that, w w wait a second, hold, hold on! I, I didn't confess or confirm any anything. 
Your Honor, I think the answer is quite clear here. As he fell, Dustin Prince grabbed the culprit's glasses. The culprit knew that he had to find his glasses and search frantically for them. What he didn't realize was that they were under the victim's body. And that is why it took him 15 minutes to make that call. Mr. Wright, are you... Are you indicting the witness as the real murderer? Of course. That's precisely what I am doing. Let me do a quick save. I know I'm right. This is the real murderer. Did you figure it out, Ned? <clears throat> More or less. <clears throat> Turns out this felt cell phone was the key to this case after all. Anyway, now's our chance to deep six this guy. I'll sink him in one shot. Yeah! This is so exciting. This is so exciting watching you work again! <clears throat> Somehow, my old self is coming back to me. It's time to sink or swim. Everything rests on the edge of a knife. This is the moment I've been waiting for. <clears throat> order, order! <clears throat> Your Honor, the defense... The defense is making a mockery of this court! Without any solid ground to stand on, he accuses the witness of being the murderer? <clears throat> yeah, 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 th th that's right! I, I'm no criminal. Th this third rate fraud of a lawyer. In that case, why don't we look at it from a different perspective? Let's hear your explanation as to why you are not the murderer. Why, that's... that's easy. Um, I, uh, well... For example, there's, um... The name the victim wrote. What about that? Oh, you mean the name Maggie? Y yeah Even an idiot... Like, you can read that, right? <clears throat> but we already know this was not written by the victim himself, after all. The defendant's name is Maggie, with an E-Y, and the victim was left-handed. So basically you were saying that in order to make the defendant look guilty, the real criminal used the victim's right hand to write her name in the, on the ground. But, 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 wouldn't that mean that the real criminal was someone the defendant knew? Otherwise how... <clears throat> else would that person know her name was Meg or Maggie, whatever it was. That is a good point. The witness didn't even know of Miss Bird before this trial. Uh, I forgot. Hmm. <clears throat> was there any way this creep could have known Maggie's name beforehand? There was a way. It would be best if I could prove that the witness has had a chance to learn that the defendant's name was Maggie. Now, will the defendant, defense, please present its case. How could the witness have known the defendant's name? With the cell phone, Mr. Wellington. <clears throat> You don't have your cell phone with you on the day of the murder, correct? So what if I didn't? When you realized you had lost it, what did you do? What did I do? Didn't you try to find it by calling it? <clears throat> Why, you... How did you... Your Honor! These questions have nothing to do with... Overruled. Mr. Wright, where are you going with this line of questioning? 
Do you think there is some relation between this witness's cell phone and the murder? I do, Your Honor. On the day of the murder, Maggie Bird picked up a lost phone in the park. <clears throat> and... She also received a phone call from the owner of that phone. Um, hello? Oh. Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give this back. I'll be right there. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. You can call me Maggie. That was when you learned that her name was Maggie. <clears throat> uh, um, uh, uh, uh. But you made one fatal mistake. Fatal mistake? My client's name is Maggie E.Y. But the name that was written on the ground was Maggie I.E. <clears throat> this is a mistake that would only occur if all you knew was how her name sounded. Ah! Order, order! But, but, your honor! The witness has no motive! And your point is? It's very simple, your honor. A person usually could not kill someone without a reason. Mr. Wellington has had no reason to kill anyone. That is absolutely correct. I don't have a motive. Hmm, Mr. Wright? <clears throat> your honor? Can you explain what motive this witness could ha have had? Uh, maybe? It's very simple, your honor. <clears throat> Are you sure, Nick? If I said I can't offer an explanation, then the trial's over, right? Yeah, but... <clears throat> now then, please present to this court proof that the witness had a motive. <clears throat> the con artist list. Mr. Wellington's motive is right here. What is this? A list? These phone numbers were pulled from the memory of the phone the defendant found. And we have determined that the people on this list and members are members of a certain group. You, you looked up all those numbers? Of course. The phone numbers were stored in the cell phone's memory. The name and numbers belong to people who are members of a certain con artist group. What? 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 Co con artist? Can you explain why these numbers were in your phone, Mr. Wellington? Th this, this is an outrage, an invasion of privacy. Looking up the phone numbers on a person's phone is a worse crime than murder. Uh, no it's not. You're one of those people who just love pressing into other people's business and prying into their lives. Private lives. I don't care, Mr. Wellington. All I want is for you to tell us what this list is about. Do you think you, any of you, can know what it's like to be a refined man like me? Objection overruled. Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? Why would the witness have the numbers of a group of con artists on his phone? Isn't that obvious? The witness is... a member of that group. Come on, click the button. There we go. Mr. Wellington is a member of this very group. No! Oh, 
of your friends' phone numbers are stored right here on this phone. If anyone were to look into these phone numbers, it would be all over for you. <clears throat> that is why you had to kill. No! This is too much! Hmm, that does make quite a bit of sense. Well, Mr. Wellington, what do you care to explain? I, um, I, uh... I got you now. I, I, that, I... That police officer... Your Honor! What is it, Mr. Payne? Your Honor, this, this, this is... This, this isn't just by dream of the witness. You said the exact same thing only a few seconds ago. But please, please let's think about the content of that phone call. <clears throat> I'm not going to read the phone call again. You guys can read this for yourself. <laughs> um, I've read it twice already. I don't need to read it again. <laughs> The defendant had already promised that she would return the phone! After that, all Mr. Wellington had to do was <clears throat> meet Miss Bird to get his phone back. Why then would he need to kill anyone? Hmm. That is a valid point. What does the defense think about this point? Hmm. If you think about it logically, then it makes sense. Then maybe we should be thinking outside the box. Yeah. If we think like that, hmm, let's see. Maybe that slime ball saw something at the crime scene that made him commit murder. <clears throat> Your thoughts, Mr. Wright? Hmm, well, uh, let's see here. I don't think Mr. Wellington went to pick up his phone in a very friendly manner. But he was promised his phone, so why would he have been unfriendly to the defendant? I think he must have seen something that... didn't agree with him when he got there. Well then, Mr. Wright. What was this something that... didn't agree with the witness? Well, that would be our friend, the victim. Take that! What Mr. Wellington saw was the victim. <clears throat> the, the, the victim? You mean Dustin Prince? Dustin Prince had gone on his date right after his shift was over. With no time to change, he went to the park, still wearing his police uniform. <clears throat> Oh! The girl that picked up the phone is... was the policeman. He couldn't have known they were going out, so he began to worry. He was afraid the policeman would ask a few questions before returning the phone. If I do anything suspicious, he might want to check on my phone. In his mind, it was possible they had already run a check on the phone. <clears throat> and he went into a panic, is what you're saying. Exactly. Officer Prince was murdered simply because he was in uniform. Mr. Payne, do you have any comments? Mr. Payne, do you have any comments? I am... Um, I'm thinking... <clears throat> hmm. It seems the truth has come out at last. The witness, Mr. Wellington, you are... <laughs> <laughs> Impressive! Not bad for a person with a third-rate education. What's 
that supposed to mean? The evidence! Evidence! Uh, that guy is getting on my nerves. All you've been doing is waving around and talking about is that suspicious cell phone. Suspicious phone number this, suspicious con group that. They're all on that phone. But you used to say that phone is really mine. Where's your proof? Your evidence. <clears throat> you want proof that this phone is yours? <laughs> I already told you earlier. That phone I lost, I'm already found it. <clears throat> You don't even have the slightest idea who the phone in your hand belongs to. You can be sure it isn't mine, you simpleton. What? <laughs> it feels good to see you squirm. Hmm. We do seem to have a problem on our hands with this phone. Whose phone is it? Without knowing that, it's meaningless as evidence. <clears throat> Your Honor, this is bad. I can't let him turn the tables on me like this. Hmm, this cell phone. There has to be something I've overlooked. There's gotta be, hmm, maybe... Fingerprints on the phone. <clears throat> hey, got it. We should check for fingerprints. Fingerprints? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Wellington must have left some prints on this phone. <clears throat> Nick, don't you remember? You got this from Maggie. You wiped it off. I what? You said there was sand all over it, so... Wiped it. I, I wiped it? <clears throat> Pretty thoroughly, too. <laughs> it's so, so much fun watching third rate trash gobble like morons amongst themselves. Ah. He's made a complete recovery. How many times do you have to say that my phone is right here, you see? Oh, and incidentally, you can't check the numbers stored on this phone. It must have glitched because all the numbers just magically disappeared. You've got to be joking. He erased all the numbers? I was going to use his evidence. <clears throat> Mr. Wellington, what's this? From the way you talk to me, it sounds like you still have some fight left in you. Where did you finally find your cell phone? <laughs> oh, you are too much. And of course, you have no idea what I'm talking about. prologue here. Sorry. The phone rang. Huh? Looks like they hung up. Ah, good. I finally found it. He remembers how he lost his memory. So that's when. <clears throat> What's wrong, Mr. Attorney? By the harsh glare in your eyes. Nick! We've worked so hard to get this far, but... If you don't, some don't do something quick, he's going to get off scot-free! I know. I know this phone has to be his. But how am I supposed to... prove something like that? Mr. Wright. 
If you cannot prove who the owner of that cell phone is, your indictment has no basis and therefore no power. It looks like you came up a penny short. Where... Where did I go wrong? <clears throat> Don't blame yourself. You're merely a third-rate lawyer. You only made one big mistake. Who are you? What are you? That's something you haven't figured out for yourself yet. Who... I am? <clears throat> the court hereby concludes the cross-examination. <laughs> if that will be all, I have to bid you gentlemen and ladies goodbye. I have a reservation at that ultra-fancy restaurant on the upper side of town. Thank you for your assistance. You've had a stressful day, so please, bon appetit. What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to just let it go at that? Raise an objection. Please wait, Your Honor. <clears throat> All right, Nick. I think I may be able to prove it. Prove it? Prove what, Mr. Wright? Everything. Y Your Honor, the cross-examination has already ended. If he questions our witness with any more of his badgering, you will not harass the witness. Is that clear, Mr. Wright? <clears throat> Did you hear that? No harassment allowed, Mr. Attorney. Please, Your Honor. Very well. But this is your last chance, Mr. Wright. You may present one piece of evidence to the court. I only get one shot at this? If you cannot prove everything... <clears throat> it's over, for your client and for you. Do you fully understand? Yes, Your Honor. I'm sure you're well aware, Your Honor, but the cross-examination period has ended! <clears throat> Were you paying attention, Mr. Payne? I said that Mr. Wright could present only one more piece of evidence. Oh! Now then, Mr. Wright, this is your last chance. It all comes down to this. It's go time. Please present the one piece of evidence that will explain everything. Well, we only have that we have not used yet. And that is the business card. <clears throat> Why, thank you. How nice. Here, please have one of mine. Judge's business card added to the record. <laughs> Wait, what am I doing? This isn't the time to be exchanging business cards. Your Honor. <clears throat> There's something very important about that card, and that is... The back of the card. This card is important because of what's on the back. Hmm. You wrote your cell phone number on the back of that. But... But that's exactly it. Can you please call the number from your cell phone? Huh? Right now? But court is still in session. It's okay. You'll see in a moment. Okay, if you say so, Nick. Is the defense preparing something, Mr. Wright? We're going to call my cell phone now. And then the court will see everything for what it is. Of all the idiot stupid thing idiotic stupid things too <laughs> ha! What, what why is my phone and what is with that stupid sounding ringtone? 
Mr. Wellington. Hmm, how strange. I could almost swear that you're holding my phone. You, you, you're, ah! No, 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 it, it can't be. By the way, before I forget, thank you very much for the bump on my head this morning. Ugh! I don't think I need to explain any further except to say. When you went to retrieve your cell phone, you mistakenly took the wrong one. <coughs> no! Long, very, very, very long scream. And he fainted. So we got him red-handed. So that is what happened. You were knocked out by Mr. Wellington? <coughs> He's a man who lives on his pride and self-image alone. In order to hide his involvement with the con artist group, she has become paranoid and has lost all ability to make rational judgments. <clears throat> hmm. Then, then, Mr. Wright, the phone you're holding... <clears throat> it's Mr. Wellington's, naturally. of that man. How is he, Mr. Payne? Uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. <clears throat> Very well. Now then, this court finds the defendant, Maggie Bird, not guilty. <clears throat> that is all. This court is adjourned. September 8th, 2.16 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 1. I knew that the real you would sink through eventually. I am so moved by what you've done for me, sir. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Mr. Wright. I feel really bad for Dustin. He didn't do anything to deserve this. It's probably because of me. Uh huh. My whole life has been nothing but a whirlwind of bad luck and failures. Your whole life? It couldn't have been that bad, could it? Since I was six months old when I fell from. The ninth floor of my apartment building. I've been hit by all sorts of vehicles, cut and sick from all sorts of foods. I feel that almost every test I've ever taken I experienced almost every kind of disaster. Never won or even tied at a game of tic tac toe. My life has really been nothing but a string of disaster. That is a uh, pretty bad. <clears throat> Up until I went to college, I was known as the goddess of misfortune. At the academy, everyone called me Lady Luckless. <laughs> Lady Luckless? What's worse is that my misfortune always seems to latch on to those around me. What do you mean? <clears throat> when I see someone in trouble, I always try to help. Oh, that's right. You were talking about this earlier. It happened again recently, too, sir. There's an old lady pacing back and forth by the pedestrian crosswalk. I gave her my hand, and before I knew it, 
We were having dinner at my house. Oh? I'm sure that Dustin's gone because of me. That's not true! That glove didn't even have any sort of special meaning. It was just a present to say... Thanks for covering one of my night shifts. Oh, I see. Everything is all my fault. Tustin's deaf. Your head being all messed up. Oh, uh, well, I don't think my head is that messed up yet. <clears throat> I'm going to find a new life for myself starting now. Next time we meet, I'm sure I'll... I'm sure I'll have found a whole... Ocean's worth of good luck by then, sir. Yeah, after all. The... Goddess of Misfortune is only a name. You bet, I'm gonna make it, I promise. No, I... Next time we meet, I'll only be an unlucky person instead of a goddess. Y yeah, that's the spirit. <clears throat> well, Mr. Wright, Maya, I should get going. Okay. <clears throat> Good luck to you. Thanks. You take care of yourselves, too. What a horrible day. Got my memory back, but things are still a little fuzzy. But you're okay, and that's what counts. You really had me worried, Nick. <clears throat> Come on, let's get back to the office. Hmm. I'm afraid to ask this, but here goes. <clears throat> so, this might sound kind of, uh... Bad, but, um, who are you? What? I thought you said you got your memory back. At that moment, everything really did come back to me. Detective Gumshoe? He's someone I've had clashes with in the past during certain cases. But he's also been a good ally during others. <clears throat> the judge? He's a lovable kind old man who is easily swayed by other people's opinions. But in the end, he always comes up with the right verdict. <clears throat> uh, this person... I haven't got a clue. Yeah, no one remembers Kane. <laughs> He seems to know me, but, uh, maybe he's mistaken me for someone else. <clears throat> and this girl, Maya! You, you, you finally remembered! This is Maya Faye. My assistant. That's right. <clears throat> I have so many unforgettable memories about her. For example... Earth to Nick, what's wrong? You keep staring at me! Don't tell me you've missed me! Uh, well, uh, yeah, I suppose I have. <clears throat> I feel like I haven't seen you in ages. Uh, oh! Well, I'm back now. So it's time for us to create new memories. Together. Alright, sounds good. All the phone numbers in my phone were erased by Mr. Wallington. I guess I have to start back from the very beginning. <clears throat> Come on, Nick. 
Let's go to that usual burger joint. Oh, uh, okay. Actually, I haven't even been two months since she came back into my life. <clears throat> and that story, that story began on one rainy afternoon two months ago. The Lost Turnabout, the end. So we shall hear about that story another time. New case opened. So yeah, next time we'll get into case two, reunion and turnabout, where we see how Phoenix uh, re-met Maya. Anyway, I'm your host Kaylee Huatari. Please like, subscribe, comment, let me know what you think, um, if you have any questions. <clears throat> um, if there's a, another game you'd like to see me do, just let me know. Um, and yeah, next time we'll get into case two.